Well, hi there. This is a cockatoo, a rather glorious hypersocial Australian parrot with a bodacious mohawk. And this is a human toddler. And they have more in common than you'd probably like to hear. I mean, human children get the lowest score we have ever given to a pet, and the terrible twos isn't exactly their finest moment. And by moment, I mean year. Now imagine that that year lasted like 50 years and had feathers. Cockatoo! They're so cute! Here, let me tell you some things about them, and you tell me if I'm talking about a toddler or a bird. They love to snuggle. They are loud and often scream and throw temper tantrums when they don't get what they want. They can speak using proper human words and maybe even sentences, but you'll have a difficult time having a conversation with one. They can be absolute goofballs doing such silly things. They can demand all of your attention, especially if you don't train them to entertain themselves for like five seconds. They just want to be around you all of the time. They can be very destructive when unsupervised, even for a short time. And they're very intelligent, but difficult to reason with. Smart enough to get into trouble, not smart enough to avoid trouble. They may bite you from time to time. They're messy eaters that will get some small fraction of all the food presented to them into their mouths, and the rest goes on the floor. They need a lot of toys and other enrichment to keep them entertained. They will often wake you up early in the morning and want your attention. They tend to poop and pee whenever and wherever the mood strikes them, but they can potentially be potty trained. And they won't do too well if you just leave them in a cage and feed them nothing but bird seed. For the record, I don't know which one I was talking about either. Do keep in mind that only one of the two will eventually grow out of this stage. But the question is, is the cockatoo a good pet? And is the cockatoo the best pet bird for you? And just for the record, birds are dinosaurs, and dinosaurs are reptiles. So is the cockatoo the best pet bird, dinosaur, and reptile for you? To answer this question, we will have to give the cockatoo a score based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. And, and, and not to ruin it, but if you're watching this video to find out if a cockatoo is the right fit for you, it almost certainly is not. Birds in general are not easy pets. A cockatoo is a completely new way of living your life. A full-time job, seven days a week, 365 days a year, no weekends, no holidays, for possibly the rest of your life. Which is why parrots like these are the most surrendered, at least by percentages, of all pets. I just don't want to get that buried in this review. If you want a parrot, but you don't want the rest of your life to be turned completely on its head, watch our video on budgies. Even green iguanas seem like a good idea by comparison. Watch that video too. You're still here? Huh. All right. Let's get into this review then, shall we? When it comes to handleability, we give the cockatoo a score of three out of five. And to be perfectly straightforward, this is the best part of having a cockatoo. They are very affectionate birds, possibly the most affectionate of all parrots. In terms of interaction, cockatoos give a lot, which is good because they ask a lot as well. For starters, and this isn't necessarily a total con, but you need to build trust with your cockatoo. Just because cockatoos are affectionate birds, that doesn't mean that they will have a trusting and affectionate relationship with you. They're also smart and they have a long memory. You need to know how to build trust with such an animal. And you have to know that if you break that trust, you might not get it back. Something to note as well is that even if your bird trusts you, and especially if it does not, they can and will bite. This is Lady and apparently she bit somebody earlier today, so that's exciting. And this bite is not as innocent as a bite from an eight foot python. Parrots pack a wallop. Proper training and trust building can reduce the likelihood of bites but they will happen. And just because they don't bite you, that doesn't mean that they won't bite other people. So that's the danger of the end where the food comes in. Now let's talk about the end where the food comes out. Birds poop often and wherever they are. In general, getting pooped on regularly is just part of handling birds. I've already been pooped on during this video. But birds do have some control. For example, birds that lek, meaning that they maintain a tiny territory where they display for females, they don't tend to poo on their lek, but they hold it and take their business just outside of the lek itself. And potty training for birds like cockatoos is possible, though somewhat controversial. 
It is my understanding that the concerns that people have with potty training are largely unfounded, but consult a real expert on this subject before making a decision about whether you prefer potty training over the regular feeling of parrot feces running down your back. Other than that, just be aware of their claws. Like most other parrots, they have zygodactyl feet, meaning that their first and fourth toes point backwards, with the second and third toes pointing forward. Zygodactyl feet are excellent for perching. They hold on very well, but you will feel that strong grip and those claws. But the upside. Most birds are not cuddly. Cockatoos can become cuddly almost to a fault. If you want a companion that wants to hang out with you all of the time, and you don't want a dog, and you like being pooped upon, but you don't want a rat or a sugar glider, then a cockatoo can be a really attractive option. But I mean all of the time. Is this something you would enjoy for a few days or for the next few decades? Very few people that get cockatoos end up willing to live that kind of life long term. And cockatoos can become very destructive and self-destructive when they don't get the level of interaction that they need. This can be mitigated to some degree by having multiple cockatoos or other large birds with which they can interact, but that has its own downsides. Now, cockatoos, as you probably know, are from Australia. And not very long ago, Leisha and I got to go to Australia, where we got to interact with these incredible black cockatoos, uh, see all kinds of amazing birds and, and, and other reptiles in the wild. We got to see uh, kookaburras flying around in the wild. It was just an amazing, amazing experience that was made possible thanks to our supporters at Patreon. If you would like to see us go to places like this and cover more of the amazing wildlife found all over this amazing planet of ours, please consider checking it out. There's also a lot of awesome features just for you. When it comes to care, we give the cockatoo a score of one out of five. Taking on a cockatoo is not like taking on a boa. It's like taking on a small child that never grows up. This is probably why Peter Pan left Neverland. I'll start with the enclosure. Like Lost Boys, cockatoos can fly. It's an option to clip their wings, but be careful. If you do it wrong, the bird can be injured or even killed. Honestly, if I were going to get a bird like this, I would only do it if I could provide enough space for it to fly around. Birds in little cages defeat the purpose of having a bird. You can get away with smaller enclosures, especially if they get considerable time outside each day. But for me, I would want an aviary or I wouldn't want a bird like this. That enclosure should have lots of appropriately sized perches. It is possible to get perches that will help wear down their claws so that trimming is not needed as regularly. You can add things to the aviary to help keep their beaks short so trimming those becomes less frequent as well, though sometimes they'll just destroy those things in an afternoon. Make sure that the enclosure is escape proof. And remember that we are discussing an intelligent dinosaur with a powerful beak and considerable dexterity. If they get out, they can fly and may fly, fly away. I've seen escaped cockatoos on multiple occasions. I was fortunately able to help someone recover their cockatoo that got away from them in the mountains a few years ago. Fortunately, they're very social birds, but you still don't want it to escape. Make sure there is constant access to clean water. And because cockatoos produce a lot of dust, you may find that you need to bathe your cockatoo regularly. When it comes to food, there are many great prepared diets for parrots that will work great as a staple diet. Supplement that regularly with fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes, as well as occasional protein, like eggs and even meat. Do verify that the foods you have chosen are safe for cockatoos, as things like avocados and shelled peanuts can be dangerous or even deadly. Just because it doesn't kill you doesn't mean that it won't kill them. Other dangers include things like ceiling fans, really clean windows, non-stick cookware, exposed wires, aerosols, scented candles, mirrors, specific kinds of jewelry and paint, potato skins, chocolate, interactions with other pets. Not to mention the fact that they may attack your other pets, your children, your significant other, visitors to your house, you sometimes. And it is because of the fact that behavioral issues can be such a big deal that I want to take a moment to discuss animal training. We have a couple of great videos on this subject already. This video on training snakes actually applies to working with parrots as well. But the biggest key is to recognize what behaviors you are rewarding. Cockatoos can be very loud, aggressive, and demanding in the extreme. If you try to leave your cockatoo and it responds by screaming until you come back to quiet it down, 
then you have taught your cockatoo that if it wants you to come back, all it has to do is scream like crazy. You need to be aware of what your bird wants from you and the circumstances under which you're giving it what it wants. For the record, we made that video 20% to help people with their snakes and 80% to help people with their kids. But incidentally, it will help a lot with your birds as well. And really any animal you'd like to train or would not like to accidentally train poorly. In addition to proper and deliberate training, behavioral issues can be reduced by providing stimulating toys and other opportunities for enrichment. Keep in mind that cockatoos are flocking birds. They are very, very exceedingly social. You can try to provide them with all of the socialization that they will need, but this is an extremely demanding responsibility to shoulder for possibly the rest of your life. They will only want all of your attention all of the time. They can make your dog look like an introvert. And one way to reduce this burden on you is to get a second cockatoo or other large parrot. This can fill a lot of their social needs and help with activities like preening that they cannot do unassisted. You can be this help, but it is just one more responsibility to add to the list. The reality is that you could spend every moment of your waking life attending to your cockatoo and it would probably still want more. So multiple birds can be an attractive option. Of course, that does mean you will need a larger enclosure or multiple enclosures, double the food, double the cleaning, and much, much more noise. These birds will have a great time together, but it's going to sound like a couple of hyper toddlers spending the afternoon having an absolutely spectacular time. And I'm really only scratching the surface with care here. Birds are not easy, and this is not an easy bird. This is a major responsibility to take on. I think for most people, having a bird like this is cool for a few days, maybe a month, but this isn't the lifestyle that most people want, and it is a lifestyle. In many meaningful ways, your life will revolve around the fact that you have a cockatoo and there are no days off. And this is why these animals are so often purchased and then surrendered. Do you want this life? You need to be very honest with yourself about that. And if you want this life now, will you still want this life in 10 years? 50? When it comes to hardiness, we give the cockatoo a score of 3 out of 5. Any animal that can live the better part of a century is probably pretty hardy. And cockatoos are. That said, we have already discussed a lot of ways that you might accidentally kill one. Obviously, they fly and can fly into invisible barriers and false rooms. But also, they don't breathe like we do. One of the craziest things I learned in my undergraduate was how birds breathe. They are much more efficient at pulling things out of the air than we are. This means that air quality is particularly important to maintain. And weird stuff like scented candles, aerosols, and cooking with non-stick cookware can be life-threatening. This is not an all-encompassing list. There is a reason they brought canaries into coal mines. You need to be very cognizant of things you might be introducing into the air in your home. Not to mention the danger that cold drafts can be. Be careful about the air. When it comes to availability, we give the cockatoo a score of 4 out of 5. And that is not even including the cockatiel, which is a cockatoo, but is a very different bird to keep, so we're going to give them a different video. Cockatoos are one of the most available parrots. And for good reasons. And bad. They're very social. If you want a parrot to interact with extensively, this is a great choice. But also, because this bird seems like a great idea generally for only a fraction of their lifespans, there are a ton of them that need new homes. There are entire bird sanctuaries devoted exclusively to surrendered cockatoos. This cockatoo comes to us from Prime Pets in Spanish Fork, Utah. This is the closest pet shop to Clint's Reptile Room in Springville, Utah. And it is recently under new management and has really become a great little shop that is definitely worth checking out. This cockatoo is one that was surrendered to them, and they've given her a great home at the shop. I think she is technically for sale, but they all seem pretty happy to just have her around. But the reality is that most cockatoos are captive bred, and they're available at pet shops, expos, and online. And again, there are untold numbers of them that need new homes. If you want this life, rescue a couple. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the cockatoo a score of 2 out of 5. Parrots are very expensive to buy. You may find a rescue for a reasonable price, but expect to spend a large sum of money on the bird. And then, I would recommend providing an aviary. Those smaller enclosures are available that can work as well. The other supplies like toys, perches, food, and water bowls, they'll be considerably less expensive. But the upfront costs are considerable. And that is not even factoring in the value of your time. And that is why, overall, 
we give the cockatoo a score of 2.6 out of 5. There are a lot of great things about cockatoos. They are such clowns, incredible companions, but they ask a lot from a person. Much, much more than most people are willing or able to give. They are the wrong choice for almost everyone, and that includes perhaps the majority of people that get them. But that's nothing against you, you're a great lady. Unless this is something that you pretty much cannot live without, I would say don't get one. And I tell you what, I'll go ahead and release that cockatiel video soon, in case you like the sound of this, but would like it to be a little bit less intense. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon.